cut rates have fascinated me for many years because like megaliths, it's not clear who created them, when they created them, or why they created them. I know I talk a lot about cart ruts, but that's because I'm always exploring them. They've been given the name cart ruts because they look a little bit like the tracks worn into stone by wheels that you see in places like Pompeii, but they are not the same thing and probably weren't for carts at all. The idea of a lost civilization is attractive because many sophisticated ancient cultures appear to spring from nowhere, but finding evidence for it is another problem entirely. Just as with megaliths, cart ruts are often attributed to this lost civilization, but even if I accept that, I still don't know what this lost civilization we're doing with them. As those of you who watch me regularly know, rather than the idea of a lost civilization, I prefer the idea that the answers are right in front of us, hidden in plain sight. I think we're missing something fairly obvious, but I just don't know what it is at the moment. In this video, I'm discussing the carrots in detail. I'm concentrating on the ones I've explored myself in the Mediterranean and the various research that has been done on them so far. I'll start by outlining the main characteristics of cart ruts. I'll talk about the dating and sites where they are found, and then I'll move on to the theories about them. Some of you may have heard the theory that they date to the last ice age, even though Malta wasn't inhabited at that time. I'll get into that too. So what are cart ruts? Cart ruts are pairs of parallel tracks carved or worn into bedrock. Malta has hundreds of these cart ruts, so any explanation into their origin needs to be clear on why there are more there than anywhere else in the world. Some cart ruts are curved, others are straight. This one at Shamshir is a good example of a curved one, and this one at the famous Clapham Junction site near Busquet Gardens is an example of a long straight one. Some are shallow, like this one at Talway in Mostar. Others are deep, like this one in Umjar. Although, what I have noticed is that when a cart rut is newly excavated due to construction work, having probably remained covered in soil for thousands of years, it's normally very deep and definitely looks carved rather than worn. So I think that shallow cart ruts are only shallow because of erosion. Originally, I think all the cart ruts were very deep. Some of the cart ruts go up hills, others are on flat land. Some are alone, others are in sets. Some of the sets include ruts that cross one another, like these at Clapham Junction. There are also instances where the rut has a second outer pair, such as these in the Tablancas Olive Grove in Shukia, Gozo. In Malta, they all have the same gauge of 1.41 meters, and this appears to be the same in Sardinia, Sicily, and mainland Italy as well, although I didn't take a tape measure with me to check that. In Malta, the cart ruts are often associated with ancient quarries, some of which are modern day quarries as well. However, due to the sheer volume of them on the islands, it's difficult to make a definite connection. People often ask me if they have specific orientations to see if they have astronomical significance. No, no they don't. They are all over the place and face many different directions. Plus, it's likely many of them were once connected, just like a winding modern road. Also, lots would have been destroyed because of building work and farming over the last few thousand years. So I don't lay any importance on whether an isolated cart rut faces north, east, south or west. They don't lead up to any of the megalithic temple sites. One does lead to a cave in an area called Limbordan, however no datable finds have been found inside this cave. Another near there runs off the edge of a cliff which has a cave entrance underneath. This could mean the cave and rut are associated, or it could mean the rut dates to a time before erosion cut the cliff away, as is also found at San Jacbu near Rabat. I don't know. Some cart ruts are found near Bronze Age sites, but they don't lead right up to their defensive walls, so it's difficult to make a connection there too. So all in all, in Malta, it's difficult to date them based on their association with infrastructure from different time periods. In Sardinia, the cart ruts glide over the top of rock-cut Neolithic necropoli, also known as Domus Tejanus. However, they are only found at a few of these sites, and there are hundreds of Domus to Janus. So they may have been created earlier or later, or have had nothing to do with the tombs themselves at all. Sicily has a number of examples located near old quarries. 
in mainland Italy, I came across several at the Etruscan necropolis of Banditaccia near Rome. Two of them look exactly like those in Malta, but then one of them gets progressively deeper and follows the contours of a tumulus, making it seem contemporary with it. Experts generally think that the cart ruts in Malta date to the Bronze Age. This is because some Punic tombs were cut into ruts. There are a few examples. This is the Punic tomb at Clapham Junction, which is cut into a pre-existing rut. However, local archaeologist Professor Anthony Bonanno has suggested that the cart ruts could be Punic and that the tombs were simply built at a later date within the Punic period. In Sardinia, I've read that the cart ruts are thought to be Roman, so much later than when the Neolithic tombs were in use. I don't agree with this. And shortly, I'll show you what I mean by that. I noticed something when I was there. In Malta, there are examples going off cliff edges, such as San Jack Boo near Rabat. And there's also one that goes under the sea in St. George's Bay, Burza Bruja. Here's a video of the one that goes under the sea. This has led to some wild claims that they must date to the last glacial maximum of the Ice Age, when sea levels in the Mediterranean were 120 meters lower than today. The main problem with this idea is that there's nothing to support such early human activity on the islands. As I discussed at length in my video, were Malta's caves inhabited by Neanderthals? There has been a lot of debate into whether Malta was inhabited by humans earlier than the accepted date of 6000 BCE in the early Neolithic, but nothing has been proven. Also, more recent seismic activity and erosion could have led to the cliff giving away. In more recent times, the Shrub Lajin Temple, first excavated in the early 20th century, has largely been lost due to the erosion of the cliff edge it sits on. It's also known that sea levels do change by small amounts over long periods of time. So the fact that the St. George's Bay cart rut starts on the coast and then goes under the shallow water doesn't necessarily make it incredibly ancient. Another point that I never hear anyone else mentioning is that there are ruts in the Har Hamim Valley in St. Julian's. During the Ice Age, Malta wasn't covered in ice, but it was a lot wetter. And it was during that time that the extensive valley systems across the islands were carved out by gushing rivers. So the Har Hamim Valley would have had a pretty deep and fast moving river running through it at the time. The cart ruts must have been carved or worn at a time when the valley had dried out. Looking at the cart ruts in Malta on a map, it does seem that many of them were once connected and may have formed part of a transport network covering the two largest islands. None have been found on the smaller island of Camino between Malta and Gozo, although there have been rumours that the tiny uninhabited island of Filfla once had one, but I can't find any proper reports on this. If cart ruts did form a transport network in Malta, then does that mean they had the same role in Sardinia, Sicily and mainland Italy? If so, then why are there so few of them in those places? In the 1950s, archaeologist John Evans carried out an experimental archaeology project to see if wheeled carts or slide cars may have worn the ruts. He found a few issues with both of these ideas. Firstly, when considering a wheeled vehicle, many of the ruts vary in their gauge by a few centimetres here and there throughout their length, which means a loose axle would have been needed. There's also the problem that a lot of the ruts are very deep, so only huge wheels would have been able to move through them. These are not insurmountable problems, but would have made the whole exercise rather impractical, especially in the Bronze Age or earlier. Both types of vehicles would have had difficulty in some places where the ruts change in depth quite abruptly, since they would have jolted. Some of the rather sharp curves would also have been difficult to navigate with either a wheeled cart or a slide car. Slide cars were also not anywhere in Europe at the time. Other issues are that wooden wheels or rods are unlikely to have worn such deep ruts and experts don't think they were carved in their entirety. 
I actually think they look like they were definitely carved all the way to the bottom. Let me show you some examples in Amjar. There are also no markings on the central reservation between each parallel track, which has experts baffled because they would expect some evidence of humans or animals pulling a cart to be found there. It's also been suggested that there was originally a soil cover on the bedrock and that as this degraded with environmental change and the movement of the vehicles, the limestone got worn away. There is a good reason for this argument. Some of the cart ruts are interrupted by dissolution hollows, which would have brought the vehicle to a standstill if the hollows had not been covered in soil. I don't buy this one at all. They are clearly carved, and even if they were not, on a vast soil-covered landscape, what are the chances that the ancestors would push their carts over the exact same spot repeatedly enough for deep ruts to be worn into the bedrock underneath. This makes no sense to me. I can't explain the dissolution hollows though. The theories that they are fossilized field furrows or were used as irrigation channels have also been put forward. These are good arguments, very carefully explained by experts, but they only apply to complex, extensive sets of cart ruts which don't really curve much, such as those at Clapham Junction. If we accept either of these theories, then we still need an explanation for the hundreds of other ones. Let's take a look at the cart ruts at the Necropoli di Su Crucifissu Manu in Sardinia. I knew about them before I visited, but I hadn't realized quite how many of them there are. I have a little video of one section here. They are really, really extensive. They go on for half a kilometer and there are loads of them. The only information I can find says that they were probably created by the Romans as a transport system leading to the nearby town of Porto Taurus, known as Taurus Libisonis in the Roman period. The cart ruts run over many of the tombs as well as near them. In this example, it's clear that the roof to the tomb has caved in causing an interruption to the cart ruts running over the top of it. This means the cart ruts could have been created before it, or after it, or have been contemporary with it. It tells us nothing, basically. However, this example tells us something, in my opinion. Most of these Neolithic tombs consisted of a graduated entrance shaft that could be walked down, a long roofed corridor called a dromus, an antechamber for rituals, and then one or more tombs branching out from the antechamber. The roof of the dromus here has collapsed and interrupted the cart ruts once again. But what about the entrance shaft in the foreground of the photograph? This would always have been an open shaft, and yet it interrupts the cart ruts too. So to me it seems as though the cart ruts predate the Neolithic tomb. 
Here's one other long Sardinian cart right near the village of Villa San Antonio, just around the corner from the enormous Menhir di Monte Corutundu. It's near a dome to Janus, but doesn't run right over the top of it. At the Etruscan necropolis of Banditaccia near Rome, I wasn't expecting to find carts at all. Here's a video. Excuse the shakiness. They seem to be contemporary with the tombs, which date to between the 9th and 1st centuries BCE. But as I mentioned in my video, why is Italy's Cyclopean masonry such a mystery? I noticed that parts of the round tombs or tumuli were built out of Cyclopean walls, which made me wonder if the site was an earlier megalithic settlement reused by the Etruscans. There's no evidence for that and I'm just speculating, but after visiting other polygonal walls in the region, I don't accept the theory that they are Roman. I think they are older. And if they are older, then so might sections of the tombs be. And if the tombs are, then so might the car roots be. I don't have photographs of the ones in Sicily because last time I tried to visit them, it said no access. Here's a satellite image from Google Earth though. These are in Syracuse and there are loads of them all in this one area. I personally don't think the cart roots date to the classical period. Once again, we have the issue, just as with the Cyclopean walls, that the Romans didn't mention them. There are numerous excavated and well-documented examples of Roman roads, as well as lightly worn cart ruts, such as the one at Pompeii, and they are nothing like the cart ruts I'm talking about. I also don't think they are Bronze Age. If they are carved rather than worn, a Bronze Age origin makes sense because at least at that time they had some sort of metal tools. But then again, the Neolithic inhabitants of Malta certainly managed to create megalithic structures with only stone tools, so they could have created carrots too. The Bronze Age date doesn't make sense to me because the settlements were not terribly sophisticated and I think these were created by a sophisticated culture. Yes, I think they're earlier, but not Ice Age. There doesn't necessarily need to be a connection between the ones in different countries either, but I do think there is. I also don't think they were a transport system. They are just too haphazard for that. But the sheer volume of them in Malta does make sense if they were contemporary with the megalithic temples. There were definitely 60 and perhaps more than 100 of these Neolithic sanctuaries on the islands. So whatever the carrots were for, it makes sense that they were created by the temple people. The islands must have been very well populated at the time. So in answer to the title of the video, yes, I do think that carrots were carved by a lost civilization in the sense that I think they were created by the temple people whose sophisticated culture appeared from nowhere. There's a lot we don't understand about the temple people and the origin of their ideas. Maybe not a lost civilization per se, but certainly something has been lost or misunderstood along the way. When it comes to Sardinia, Sicily and mainland Italy, I'm not sure. But whatever information we're missing about the temple people, we're probably missing about those locations as well. But what were the ruts for? I don't know. I have my own theories on what Menhirs were really for and what was happening in the Maltese temples and I'm getting somewhere with the theory about the Cyclopean walls but carrots have me really confused and as I've said before they aren't just in Malta and Italy. Give me your ideas, let's figure this out. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. I'm determined to solve at least a tiny bit of the mystery that is the ancient past but I want a community to do it with. Having support on YouTube and social media makes the journey so much more fun. I love sharing my trips and my research. I also want to say thank you to my patrons, all four of you. I really appreciate you throwing a little cash at me. It really helps my quest. My website links to, to my videos and podcasts, including where I have been a guest. I also add information to it on the places I visit. So take a look at megalithhunter.com for more details.